Good evening campers, it's me Kira, and today we are going to talk about Paul Murray's The Bee Sting. The Bee Sting is set around the 2008 financial crisis, and we are going to see the downfall of the Barnes family. The head of the family, Dickie, who has taken over his father's car dealsmanship, is dealing with the financial struggles that the recession has brought on. However, much to the dismay of his wife, he's more focused on building a end-of-the-world bunker, a project that he has somehow got caught up into. Speaking of Dickie's wife, there is a Melda, who wants to keep up with the Joneses, but is realising that her marriage is falling apart. Then we have the two children. We have Cass, who was a star student, but has started drinking and getting into bad friendships and bad relationships. Then we have the youngest, PJ, who wants to run away from home, but is being sent texts by someone who might not be who they say they are. The bee sting is set up so that we spend adequate time with each member of the family. And I will say, for all the generations, Murray really begins to get a distinct voice on each of these characters. And due to the amount of time that we spend with each character, however, some of them are really lengthy. That Imelda chapter went way longer than it needed to. It might be worth noting that the Bee Sting is quite heavy on the old flashback, and I think that does work in relation to Dickie's character, but you know it's a problem when the Rushdie lover complains about a flashback, because that that man really likes a flashback, you know. Oh no, I digress. I can't remember what I was talking about. Ah, uh, yes, because we spent adequate time with each character, we are able to get a sense of how each member views everyone else, and this allows Murray to add red herrings and misdirect our attention as we uncover what is the actual circumstances surrounding the Barnes family. And the Beastie for me is very reminiscent of Laurent Mauvignier's The Birthday Party. I'm fully aware that I'm saying Laurent Mauvignier's The Birthday Party like a lot in recent reviews, and I'm really sorry about that. I'm like the guy who's only watched like Babe, and every subsequent film is met with, yeah, I can see a little bit of Babe in that, even if it's the Titanic or Saw. I digress. What you're going to get here is a story that slowly ratchets up the tension until you reach the climax. And now that I think about it, it's very reminiscent of Burner Wood by Alan Catton, in the way that both Murray and Catton use money as a catalyst to start the story. As such, money is not a motive, but it manipulates characters to do in certain things that otherwise they would not be willing to do. Since finishing the b there has been one question that has been plaguing me, and that is why Murray has decided to use some of the stylistic components within this book. In relation to Dickie, Cass and PJ, these three characters are written very traditionally, apart from with the younger generation implementing text messages, which I have to be said is done very well. You'll be quick to realise that Imelda's chapter has zero punctuation. While this stream of consciousness style it does work to reflect Imelda's own insecurities and anxieties regarding the situation of her family, it's a little bit odd that it's not first person. It's still a third person narrative in a stream of consciousness style, and I'm not entirely sure it adds. While I can see this as a quirk of Murray's writing, nothing really prepared me for after the long swathes of character development, we move into shorter chapters that switch from the third person to the second for every character. While I can understand the argumentation that the reason for this switch is that as the tension builds up, you're becoming more invested into the story, it really brings you into it. Nothing really prepared me for what I would call the third act of the bee sting, which is where we move into... It's easier if I show you. So while we start off with 80 pages dedicated to one character, we move into the character names here with these small inklings of text, again, as the story ratchets up. And the speed at which you're reading alongside the characters finally coming together as a family really does build up this tension. I like YMW Melly. I got Catton on my mind. It's very similar to Catton's The Luminaries as we get the tension and the story and as it unfolds, moving into quicker and quicker sections, but this little third act that I'm calling moves from the second person back to the third, and I'm not sure it adds anything. I don't know if it, I don't know why he has decided to do that. I don't think it, I don't think it impacts the novel. It, it's just, maybe it's a quirk. I'm not entirely sure. It didn't distract from the reading. It didn't change the overall structure um, of the story, but it's, it's very confusing to why Murray has decided to do that. Clearly it's intentional, I just don't know if it's needed or not. But nevertheless, The Bee Sting is a good read. If you're interested in a thriller with lots of misdirections and red herrings and really trying to figure out what the family situation is, I definitely would pick this up. And for me, The Bee Sting is a 6 out of 10.